Ting Yoon, the floofy tail lady, the floofy ear lady, and probably the best four star in the game. Let's go ahead and talk about her. Let's, let's talk about the build guide. I told you guys the other day in the Jing Yuan build guide, I would show you how to build Ting Yoon. So yeah, we're going to follow up with that and actually do a build guide on Ting Yoon now because I feel like having her and Jing Yuan on the same team is absolutely crazy. And honestly, her with any DPS is just kind of crazy. So yeah, we're going to talk about her skills first, then we'll talk about what light cone she can use. We'll hop into the traces and how you should level those up. Then we'll talk about the relics and then Eidolons. And we'll have like character showcase in between. So guys, starting off with her skill, Soothing Melody. She's going to be granting a single ally with Bendiction that increases their attack by 32% up to 18% of Ting Yoon's current attack. When the ally with Bendiction attacks, they will deal additional lightning damage equal to 26% of the ally's attack. Bendiction lasts for three turns and is only effective on the most recent receiver of Ting Yoon's skill. She also has some bonus effects here, which we'll talk about later, but some of them are from Eidolons and some of them are from the traces. So when we get to the traces portion, we'll talk about those. But the main thing we're looking at here on her skill is actually the attack increase that she gives because this does scale off of Ting Yoon's current attack and this will play into the build we actually use on her. So that's the main reason why we're using the build we're using is because of this skill right here. Now talking about her ultimate. Amidst the rejoicing clouds, regenerates 50 energy for a single ally and increases the target's damage by 35% for two turns. Now yours probably won't be 35%. I just have an E3 Ting Yoon so I do get that extra ultimate buff off. Uh, but yeah, it'll be a little bit lower for you normally. And then finally, her talent. When an enemy is being attacked by Ting Yoon, the ally with Bendiction immediately deals additional lightning damage equal to 39% of that ally's attack to the same enemy. And this is another reason why she is pretty good as far as using with any DPS character because she gains additional attack based off of that person's attack. Meaning if you're against any units that are weak against Electro, she's going to absolutely smack them. We can talk about her technique too. Her technique's pretty nice because she can immediately regenerate 50 energy upon using her technique. That means you can have her ultimate as soon as she starts the battle, which is really super nice because you can regenerate energy for someone else when she uses her ultimate. So yes. With her skills out of the way, we're going to hop into our light cones now and what's the best in slot for her. Now me personally, I don't have like any of the best in slot light cones for her. So we're working with what we have right now. Uh, I'm using planetary rendezvous right now because we are using her with Jing Yuen. So it does give him increased damage by 12% because he is the same type as Ting Yun. There's also the free battle pass one past and future, but this one doesn't work too too well because you only really get the buff at the beginning of battle if you're running the same relic set that i'm running and you really don't use her skill but once every three turns so you're only getting this buff once every three turns so it just doesn't make it that good i would say one of the best guaranteed ones you could get for her would be crave the moon weave the clouds which is a battle pass light cone so if you do have the battle pass and you don't have a good light cone for her, i would pick this up basically what this does at the beginning of the user's turn is you're randomly going to apply an effect to all allies whether that be an attack increase a crit damage increase or a regeneration rate increase to all allies and the same effect won't be applied every turn so you do have some randomization there of what effects you actually get and this i would say is probably like the best in slot for ting yun when the wearer uses their ultimate all allies are advanced forward by 16 percent this is just super good because whenever she uses her ultimate you're getting their ultimate gauge up and you're allowing them to move a lot faster as well so this in all is just really good for her to use and i would recommend using this on her if you have it if you do have this five star light cone it's just honestly really broken i would definitely use this on her if you have it but overall i would would say the easiest one to get and the most common one probably that you should use on her would probably be dance 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 but guys before hopping into the traces if you enjoy ting yun as much as i do if you think she's cute and has a floofy tail then maybe you should hit the subscribe button and that would help out tremendously anyways guys let's go ahead and talk about the traces now all right, guys, hopping into her traces now. Let's talk about the big notes first, and then we'll talk about what you should be leveling up as far as the other traces go. So her best one, you know, the one you should be getting first if you have leveled her up to like level 70 or whatever, would be Jubilee and Passage because it immediately lets her regenerate five energy at the start of her turn. So she's passively gaining five energy every single turn, which means you're getting your ultimate up that much faster. The second best is going to be Nourish Jovility, which increases Ting Yun's speed by 20% for one turn after using a skill. This, this means you'll be able to get her back faster to actually use her ability faster so you can keep buffing and keep using her ultimate and keep building that ultimate gauge as well and the final one here is going to be increasing the basic attack damage by 40 percent which is pretty good still because you are going to be mainly using her basic attack for the three turns in between using her skill so this is just really good to have too all right guys talking about how you should actually level up the traces now firstly i would probably be investing a lot into the ultimate because the ultimate is going to give you that increased damage which is actually really huge and you can actually get this ultimate up kind of quick uh number two i'd be upgrading would probably be the skill right here because the skill will be used every three turns like i said before and it'll also be giving that increased attack for that character as well and finally you'll level up the talent because that's actually going to be doing additional damage 
damage based off of the ally whoever has bendiction on them so whoever you use the skill on you'll be getting damage scaled off of that so just level that one up last for a quick rundown ultimate skill and then talent that would be my recommendation as far as that goes all right guys hopping into the relics now the relics I i'll explain the relics in a second but we are going to be running a four piece musketeer and i'm also running a two piece sprightly i do have a level three chain on right now and i'll explain that in a second so the reason why we're running the four piece musketeer is because we want to increase the attack for team yun as much as possible and the reason why we're increasing this attack is because of our skill the skill actually does scale off of team yun's attack so you do want to push our attack up as much as possible so let's go ahead and hop into the gear now we'll talk about the main stats and then i'll put all of these sub stats on a chart for what you would need to level up with that so let's go ahead and talk about it so on the boots guys you want to run speed because you want ting yun to be able to pop off as quickly as possible you're also going to need this for the planar ornament set as well to actually activate this ability you do want over 120 speed so i did build into speed on the boots so we can actually activate that ability also guys another good set you could run on her would be a two-piece fleet of the ageless what this is going to do is increase her max hp by 12 percent it's also going to be increasing all allies attack by eight percent so this does give a passive buff for the rest of the team personally i do think this is better than the other one but i don't really have a good set for ting yun right now so as far as this video goes today we're just using the other set but overall i do think this set would be better overall than that you can also run two set space station as well but i do find this set to be a little bit more viable because it does increase her survivability and like i said it does give that eight percent attack increase to the whole team which is just really really nice and overall speed is just kind of good for ting yun because you want her to be able to go as quickly as possible so you can keep getting that ultimate up because she's going to be like a battery for your team basically or your dps on the body we're going to be rocking an attack percentage robes here the reason why we're rocking attack percentage is like i said before to boost up that attack as much as possible so that means you're getting as much out of her skill as humanly possible on the chain here the reason i'm running this level three one is because literally this is the only drop i have ever gotten that has been energy regeneration rate i have done so many runs for so many different types of, of chains here and I have only gotten one drop of energy regeneration right of this right here and I got this at the beginning of the game when I first beat world 4 so yeah we're using this right now the substats are not it we're just using it for the energy regeneration right and that's what I would recommend using as well and as far as the sphere goes you do want to run an attack sphere playing into that skill a bit more to increase the amount of attack you're actually giving to your ally here just boost it up as much as you can right now I'm coping out with whatever this is I'm just putting it on here just to get the stat bonus here so as far as substats go guys i would recommend specking in the speed attack percentage effect resistance hp percentage defense percentage can help and also break effect can help as well break effect mainly just to get that big damage out if you do have to use her to break an enemy shield you can use that there uh but it's not necessary the best ones i would say would be focusing on getting speed attack percentage and some hp percentage because she does die really really quick so yeah that's what i'd be focusing on there just to quickly show off some of my stats here we're around like 140 speed speed right now so we're getting that planet ornament buff off uh the hp is kind of low it's i mean it's just under 2000 hp i wish i could push that up a little bit higher defense is really low because we do have a copium set on her our energy regeneration rate as you can see here is at 112.7 which is nice because she's getting her energy up a lot faster her max energy is 130 that means that's going to be what you need to actually use her ultimate break effects at 10 percent you don't need to worry about crit damage crit rate at all and you don't even need like a lightning damage boost here guys like i said just spec all into attack that you can and then finally let's talk about the eidolons now for Ting Yun. Now I have E3 Ting Yun, and honestly, her E6 is pretty cracked because it regenerates an extra 10 energy for an ally, and that is really, really cracked. But I would say her second best one is probably E2 right here because this also grants additional energy after defeating an enemy. So for someone like Jing Yuen, right, you can actually technically proc off 10 energy with him because the Lightning Lord can technically proc off 5 energy for him and then his skill can also proc off another 5 energy for him if you kill someone. So you're getting an extra 10 energy for Jin Yuan if you're using him there. Someone like Celia or something like that, you only proc off 5 energy because their other turn doesn't technically count as a turn so it's all within the same like action kind of. Uh, so it doesn't really count there. E1 also really good too because this does give you a speed boost and what's so good about this speed boost is if you use this on Jin Yuen you can actually use the skill on him and you can technically if you have enough speed with him you can have him go twice before the lightning lord goes meaning you're guaranteed like seven to ten stacks every single time the lightning lord goes which just means that much more damage for the team so guys as far as a team that i'm running this is like a core of a team that i'm running here i'm running japar ting yun jing yuan and i usually run another dps at the end here uh 
but honestly, Ting Yoon can literally be used on any single team. She's just really that cracked. You can really just slaughter into any team. So, I mean, there's not really like a team comp for her, like a, the best team, best case scenario. I guess base case scenario would be with Jing Yuen. But I mean, overall, she just works with anyone. She can work with Young Ching. She can work with Sila. She can work with just about any character. So yeah, not really a team comp there. This is just a core of a team that I use right here. And I can either slot in a healer if I need a healer for whatever reason. And this team just works really well for these three characters, honestly. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Hope everyone enjoyed my little guide on Ting Yoon. Please join the Discord if you haven't already. There will be a link in the description for that. I'm trying to grow the Discord out a bit more so we can grow the community. And, guys, uh, one little quick note here. I'll probably be making a playlist of all my build guides. If you guys have any build guides that you want me to make or any team comp guides that you want me to make, Leave it in the comments below. I'll try to get to that and make that. We do have a Japard build guide coming out pretty soon. If you have that boy Jeppy, you technically don't even need a healer with him on the team, which makes him really cracked. So as far as build guides I have playing coming out, I do have a Young Ching build guide coming out. I'll also be having a Shu Shang build guide coming out in the future as well. I do have Clara, so I could do a Clara build guide. She just is not leveled at all. I don't have any like resources at all to level her or really anything right now else. So yeah, if you guys want to see more build guides and other characters, let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely make those. Anyways guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Hope everyone enjoyed. I'm talking really fast now to end it. So yeah, see you guys later. Bye bye.